Hello guys and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if this is your first time here. I'm back in a suit. Today's film we're going to be watching is Sunset Boulevard from 1950. Now this is a requested film over on Patreon but many people have been requesting this in comments so thank you. So we're going to dive into this uh, fairly unknowing with what's going to be going on. If you can hear like knocking or tapping and stuff in the background, it's my door. Uh, it's very windy outside. It's kind of like a storm, but it's not. I just thought I'd let you know in case you can hear the noises. Also stick around until afterwards where we go through all of the trivia with the film as well. It's something I know you guys love, so I hope you can join me for that. I've got a coffee just here. Let's watch Sunset Boulevard from 1950. Paramount Picture presents Sunset Boulevard. I actually really like that. that they did the titles at the floor and then as soon as they pan up, that's the start of the scene. It's about five o'clock in the morning. That's Sunset Boulevard. It's very familiar to me. I don't know why. A murder has been reported. An old time star is involved. But before you hear it all distorted, maybe you'd like to hear the facts, the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Uh -huh. You see, the body of a young man was found floating in the Pool of the house. Nobody important, really. A mob hit? Poor dope. He always wanted a pool. That is actually a very good shot. How did they do that? Did they put the camera underneath the pane of glass inside the pool? Like in a box or something? Let's go back about six months, find the day when it all started. Living in an apartment house. About That's a lovely shot. I sat there grinding out original stories, only I seem to have lost my touch. <laughs> All I know is, they didn't sell. Ah, oh, the struggling job. Joseph C. Gellis, we come for the car. Oh, are they bailiffs? 1946 Plymouth Convertible. Like okay, a repo man. Why should I give you the keys? Because you're three payments behind, and because we got a court order. We got a court order for you, sir. Relax, fans, the car isn't here. A lot more uh, civilized than what some repo places can be. <laughs> Had to get away for his health, I suppose. You don't believe me? Look in the garage. We believe you, only now we want you to believe us. Hmm. That car better be back here by noon tomorrow. Tomorrow, there's gonna to be fireworks. There'll be a hell to pay. You say the cutest thing. I needed about $290 or I'd lose my car. It wasn't in Palm Springs and it wasn't in the garage. So he's lied. So I kept it across the street. Surely they're watching you? Mind you, they're not cops and they are repo men. They're, they're not gonna chase you. My agent told me it was dead as a doornail. Paramount Pictures. Wait, so is this about people in the industry? His name was Sheldrake. He was a smart producer. The set of ulcers to prove it. All right, Gillis, what's your story about? Yes, it is. Sorry, in the trailer. Yes. I got a gimmick that's real good. Uh-huh. You got a title? It's got a big twist. They were pretty hot about it over 20th. I was trying to see the pictures on the left to see if they were little uh, images of other stars, real stars. I bet you could make the whole thing for under a million. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Sheldrake. Base is loaded. I covered it with a two-page synopsis. Thank you. But I wouldn't bother. What's wrong with it? Oh, it was just a rehash of something that wasn't very good to begin with. I'm sure you'll be glad to meet Mr. Gillis. He wrote it. This is Miss Kramer. Oh, hi. The name is Schaefer. Betty Schaefer. Hi, Betty. Right now, I wish I could crawl in a hole and pull it in after me. I just didn't think it was any good. I found it flat and trite. Exactly what kind of material do you recommend? I just think that picture should say a little something. Yes, yeah, gotta have a bit of meaning. Is that a picture of Bing Crosby? You'd have turned down Gone with the Wind. No, that was me. I said, who wants to see a Civil Fine. War picture? <laughs> Oh, lovely. I'd always heard that you had some talent. You sound like a bunch of New York critics. That'll be all, Miss Kramer. Uh, Schaefer. Next time I'll write you the naked and the dead. <laughs> Seems like Zanuck has got himself a baseball picture. Who made Gone with the Wind? Was it Paramount Pictures as well? Because if so, that's... Oh, sorry, if it's not Paramount Pictures, that's quite funny. I'm over a barrel. I need a job. I haven't got a thing. He is not getting any work at the moment. And you're just there not giving him a scrap. Could you let me have 300 bucks yourself as a personal loan? That's a heck of a personal loan back then as Last well. Last year somebody talked me into buying a ranch in the valley. Keep looking at the pictures behind though. He's just giving some huge story about, well I can't afford it so I can't get, uh, afford giving you any money. Yeah but you've got a job getting a lot of money. Kind of a combination office, coffee clutch and waiting room. Waiting for the gravy train. Waiting for nothing. I always loved back then. I have a feeling it's the same for this. There's no glass in those doors. Probably because of camera reflections. I don't know but Finally, I located that agent of mine. Of course I could give you $300. I'm not going to. I'm not just your agent. Does he do this often then, or is this just a one-off thing? As in, does he often go around to people and ask for money? 
If I lose my car, it's like having my legs cut off. I take it it's just because of the car, though, not because he's always stuck with money because of his job. I need three hundred dollars. Maybe what you need is another agent. Maybe that's just what I'll do. I'll get another agent. As I drove back towards town, I took inventory of my prospects. They now added up to exactly zero. Apparently, I just didn't have what it takes. I love everything about old films. There'd be enough for a bus ticket back to Ohio. Back to that $35 a week job. Why don't you go out and take a crack at Hollywood? I'd say that guy behind is following very close, but... Uh-oh. Oh no, it's the, it's the people. The car people. Oh no, 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 they spotted you already. Yeah, they're about to... Jeez. <laughs> Heart attack. <laughs> you just lost them. I don't know how, because surely they could have seen that smoke. I had landed myself in the driveway of some big mansion that looked run down and deserted. A great big empty garage. Just for me. <laughs> if ever there was a place to stash away a limping car. Perfect place. The doors are busted, you can't shut them, but fantastic. There was another occupant in that garage. Another car? An enormous foreign-built oh. automobile. Lovely. It had a 1932 license. I figured that's when the owners had moved out. Because it's definitely not been used in a long time. The idea was to get to Artie Green's. Oh, Artie. I thought he said Marty earlier. Maybe he did. Maybe he said someone else as well, called Marty. It was a great big white elephant of a place. A neglected house gets an unhappy look. Oh, it's neglected. It's a beautiful home. An old woman in great expectations, taking it out on the world because she'd been given the go-by. Is he gonna live there and make it Who make there? it new? Why are you so late? But someone lives Why there. Why have you kept me waiting so long? <laughs> that is a great shot. Creepy, but great. So far, the I forgot what it's called now. The mise en scene is superb. Like the setup of the shot with everything. I just put my car in a garage. I had a blowout. I thought maybe this. Go on in. He thinks that he's the person that she's waiting for. But go on. But he's not. You're not uh, properly dressed for the occasion. What's the occasion? Have him come up, Max. What is the occasion? Will you listen to me for just a minute? Madame is waiting. Is it that kind of occasion? need any help with the coffin, call me. Wait, what? It's really creepy here, because when that went quiet there, I put the sound of wind outside. Of... This way. Oh, it's very... very dark. I put him on my massage table in front of the fire. He always liked fires and poking at them with a stick. Oh God! Oh, lovely. A lovely room, though. Bed looks look, look, like a boat. In my mind, we'll bury him in the garden. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I want the coffin to be white, and I want it specially lined with satin. Okay. Wait, what? It's a monkey. I thought it was a person. Lady, you got the wrong man. Yeah. I had some trouble with my car. Yeah, I'm not the mortician. I thought this was an empty house. It is not. Get out. Get out, I tell you. Wait a minute, haven't I seen you before? You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. Oh. I am big. It's That's the a... pictures that got small. <laughs> That's a great line. They're dead. They're it's finished. The pictures that the get time small. In this business when they had the eyes of the whole wide world. They had to have the ears of the world too. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. 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 That's all I That's do. That's the popcorn business comes in. It's you talk. Buy yourself a bag and plug up your ears. They took the idols and smashed them. It's even worse now in Hollywood. I'm not an executive, just a writer. Now they just churn stuff out that doesn't mean anything. There's a microphone right there to catch the last gurgles. Yeah, it was all art back in the day. I mean, even time like this. Next time I'll bring my autograph album along. This was or art. Or maybe a hunk of cement and ask for your footprint. But yeah, now it's just... Come on, let's just get another film out. Go. Just a minute, you. So maybe you can be of help. You're a writer, you said. Is he going to get a job now writing for her? So you have written pictures, haven't you? Yeah, of course. Last one I wrote was about Okies and the Dust Bowl. When it reached the screen, the whole thing played on a torpedo boat. Yeah, I was going to say that they completely changed the premise of the film. Yeah. Music's very sci-fi on this bit. Intimate, isn't it? It's like a set out of... The wind uh, gets in that blasted pipe organ. I ought to have a take now. Like a Frankenstein film or something. How long is a movie script these days? Depends on what it is, a Donald Duck or a Joan of Arc. I'm trying to remember how long 
is a usual script. Looks like enough for six important pictures. Yeah, there's a lot. I think I'll have DeMille direct it. We made a lot of pictures together. And you'll play Salome. Who else? <laughs> Only asking. I didn't know you were planning a comeback. I hate that word. It's a return. Comeback, return, kind of the same thing. Kissing his cold, dead lips. Lovely. I love it in Pomona. <laughs> It's kind of morbid. Never let another writer read your material. He may steal it. That's what I was about to say. Copyright trademarks and all that. If you're a writer and that, then don't uh, give your stories out. I said sit down. And she'd mention something to drink. Why not? Just as long as she doesn't poison the drink. Max was the only other person in that grim sunset castle. Oh my god, that place all to herself. She sat coiled up like a watch spring, her cigarette clamped in a curious holder. That's a fantastic shot though, with her hand and the, the cigarette I'm and everything. Begging it's... me in her own proud way. She's got a leg up as well, I didn't even notice that. Like a little gremlin on the seat. It sure was a cosy setup. Yeah, it's brilliant. Who's that? Oh, maybe he's the, the mortician guy they were waiting for. The real guy arrived with the yeah. baby coffin. It was all done with great dignity. He must have been a very important chimp. The great-grandson of King Kong. <laughs> no, he's probably like a son to her. That silly hodgepodge of melodramatic plots. However, by then, I'd God, started concocting a little plot of my own. To steal the story? I mean, he did say about the mention of stories could be stolen. Maybe it's a little long and maybe there's some repetitions, but you're not a professional writer. Maybe I can make one of you... One or two changes. What it needs is uh, maybe a little more dialogue. I will not have it butchered. I was say, you've got to see the true potential on the screen. Just an editing yeah. job. You can find somebody. I have to have somebody I could trust. Like him. When were you born? December 21st. Hey. Sagittarius. December. I'm in December. I well. like Sagittarians. You can trust them. Huh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I want you to do this work. I'm busy. You know, I'm uh, pretty expensive. <laughs> mm hmm Like, gonna pile the money on. Yeah, I better take the rest of the script home and read it. You'll have to finish it here. It's his idea to steal it. The name is Gillis. Where do you live? Aldo Nido Apartments. Why shouldn't you stay here? Look, I'll come back early tomorrow. It could work. The room over the garage. Max will take you there. Garage. The way she said it was just funny. So now he's he's got himself a job and he's got a place to stay. I dropped the hook. She snapped at it. Hook. Line and sinker. The room's probably fairly dire, though. This room hasn't been used for a long time. Maybe it ain't that bad. Never make house beautiful, but I guess it's okay for one night. Bed falls apart. I made you a bed this afternoon. How did you know I was going to stay this afternoon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how did he know? He made the bed up early in the afternoon. Like they were expecting him. Mm. One week she received 17,000 fan letters. Begged one of her silk stockings. Later he s***ed himself with it. Oh, my God. Sure turned into an interesting driveway. Yeah, just a bit, mate. You only wanted to store your car there. I pegged him as slightly cuckoo too. Because you had a tyre blowout. A stroke, maybe. <laughs> cuckoo because he had a stroke. Out of beat with the rest of the world, crumbling apart in slow motion. There was a tennis court, or rather the ghost of a tennis court. Yeah. With faded markings and a sagging net. The really beautiful descriptions in this film. And of course she had a pool. I love them. It was empty now. Ugh. Got the rats in there. There was something else going on below. The last rites for that hairy old chimp. Yeah, the funeral. As if she were laying to rest an only child. Yeah, this is what I meant. I think he was like her son. Was her life really as empty as that? Sometimes animals mean a lot to people. It was all very queer, but queer things were yet to come. Yeah, but I mean, people do have these strong connections with animals. That night I had a mixed up dream. But people that don't know that kind of think it's weird, so. In it there was an organ grinder. Couldn't see his face, but the organ was all draped in black and a chimp was dancing for pennies. The way the dreams play with your head. When I opened my eyes, the music was still there. She's playing the music? Wait, the music we're hearing, is it diegetic? And this is the music he was hearing. Somebody had brought in all my belongings, my books, my typewriter, my clothes. It is. It's getting louder as he's going towards the door, so I presume so. But... It's incredibly loud, though. Like, all right, I'm going to turn it down in a minute if it's that loud. Hey, yo! What are my things doing here? I know how to play some of this. I brought them myself. Is that so? You came into the room while I was asleep. Who asked you to? I did. I don't know 
why you should be so upset. Yeah, but you... Seems like a good idea if we are to work together. Yeah, but they're his things. There's nothing in the deal about my Not stay. moving in. You yeah. Like Thanks for the invitation. I've got my own apartment. You shouldn't have told her where you lived. All paid for. Okay, we'll deduct it from my salary. We won't keep books. Yeah, but that's, like, for me, that's such an annoying thing. You just get roped into a situation. Oh, pack him up again. I didn't say I was staying. Yeah, and you want your own time to yourself, not to be stuck there all the time. The picture in the background reminds me of uh, the one in Laura, the film. It wasn't so simple getting some coherence into those wild hallucinations of hers. She's been there writing down every little whimsical thing in her head. Afraid I'd do injury to that precious brain child. Don't fold the pages, you'll ruin it. What's that? It's the Just a scene I page threw up. I Which think. scene? Oh. Cut away from me. Well, honestly, it's a little too much of you. They don't want you in every scene. Then why they still write me fan letters every day? Because they want to see me. Me, Norma Desmond. She's a very big personality. If they were to remake this now, I think, what's her name? Play her very, very well. Plays in Mamma Mia and... I'll put her on the screen here. Plain crazy when it came to that one subject, her celluloid self. Thinks a lot of herself. She was probably very, very good. And still more Norma Desmond. Must be very, very lonely, though. Max would haul up that enormous oil painting. Oh, wow, that's cool. And we'd see a movie right in her living room. I love that. Yeah, and that bit there behind is the uh, projector. The plain fact was she was afraid of that world outside. Afraid it would remind her that time had passed. Some people do. Just stick around inside and... Run the projection machine. Run every day into the next. She'd sit very close to me. Sometimes as we watched, she'd clutch my arm, forgetting she was my employer. I was going to say, hopefully she doesn't start growing a huge attachment to him, but starts to love him. They were always her pictures. That's all she wanted to see. Cast out this wicked dream which has seized my heart. That is a lovely shot. As in the one in the picture. The depth of it is fantastic. We didn't need dialogue. We had faces. And emotional things in the face, yeah. There just aren't any faces like that anymore. Maybe one, Garbo. Haven't they got any eyes? Have they forgotten what a star looks like? I'll show them. I'll be up there again. Love that shot. That'll be me. That's, that's a very good shot. The silhouetted uh, profile. I get half of her winning, which was about the only cash money I ever got. He's kind of just like a... Uh... I used to think of them as her waxworks. One heart. Spade. Pass. Like an escort. Not for that kind of thing, but you know what I mean. The partner by your side kind of thing. Oh. It's the people about the car again, I think. You're bringing them to our door? They asked for you. I'm not here. That's what I told them. But they found your car in the garage and they're going to tow it away. Oh, no. Just let them tow it away. Then he's got no escape from there, I suppose. That's probably what he's thinking. I need some money. I want to talk to you. Oh, I've forgotten how many spades are out. Look, I need some money right now. Can't you wait until I'm dumb, eh? Please. <laughs> the woman next to her is so nosy. She's like, oh, it's like that, is it? She pays him to be with her. It's kind of what it. I feel like they're thinking it is. Yeah, you bit late. A little bit late. That's it. It's gone. Now, what is it? Where's the fire? The car. That's why he was saying it. I thought it was a matter of life and death. It is to me. It is, yes. Yeah, that was his life. That's why I took this job ghostwriting. Now you're being silly. We don't need two cars. We have a car. It's only a car. That's not been driven in years. Hey, it cost me $28,000. Wow. It's a gorgeous car. So Max got that old bus down off its blocks. Yeah, he got it working. Okay, good. But he's not got his own car. The whole thing was upholstered in leopard skin. The freedom. Because now he's just lumbered with her all the time. That's a dreadful shirt you're wearing. What's wrong with it? Nothing if you work in the filling station. He's also been wearing that every day. What's a good man's shop in town? The very best. Oh, wait. And I certainly don't want you buying them for me. He's been there a while, hasn't he, now? And I certainly don't want you buying them for me. And I just want you to look nice. It seems to be over a period of days that he's been mentioning. And must you chew gum? She's starting to change him as well. Oh, there's nothing like blue flannel for a man. I know he's tied down with not having the money, but... I don't need a tuxedo. A tuxedo and tails? Tails, that's ridiculous. You need them for parties. You need them for New Year's Eve. But he's not planning on being with you for that long. He's not your husband. Of course, it's a little more expensive. The camel's hair will do. She is paying. <laughs> well, it's as long as the lady's paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although, in his mind, he's thinking, well, now everybody thinks 
that I am with her, and she's kind of taken over your life. A great big package of rain. It came right through the old roof. She had Max move me to the main house. I didn't much like the idea. No. It's losing all of sense of independence and... The only time I could have to myself was in that room. He's becoming, you know, less of a singularity and more of a... They're just a duo together. Nice room, though. It's probably the only upside to it. Whose room was this? It was the room of the husband. I was going to say... Of uh, the husband's, I should say. Adam has been married three times. So she is kind of almost replacing the husband figure with him. Let's just hope the husband didn't die in the bed. Okay, so he can't lock himself in the bathroom. There isn't any lock. There are no locks anywhere in this house, sir. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. The doctor suggested it. Madame has moments of melancholy. Oh. There have been some attempts at... Ah, so s to stop that. You have to be very careful. No sleeping pills, no razor blades. Why, her career? Yeah, because she feels like that she's not worth enough anymore, maybe. Or... Still gets those fan letters. I wouldn't look too closely at the postmarks. Wait, you send them. To try and make her feel better. He's been sending the letters to her. I suppose all the waxworks are coming. Madame made the arrangements. Unless she made them up. So all of this is some kind of ruse? Just for company? To stop the loneliness? That's what I'm getting from it anyway. That room of hers, all satin and ruffles. And that bed like a gilded rowboat. Yeah, I love the bed. The bed is very... If you guys have been watching my other reactions, very Steed and Ed. <laughs> Our flag means death. It was at her New Year's party that I found out how she felt about me. She's got moves. And she looks lovely in the dress as well. Perfect. Wonderful show. <laughs> He's very dapper. Getting dressed up was always just putting on my dark blue suit. Come on, let's have a drink. Shouldn't we wait for the others? There's not going to be any others, is there, for the New Year's celebrations? It's just them. There's nothing like tile for a tango. Oh, I feel bad for her. The, the fame that she's still got is a lot of that in her head, from what she thinks, anyway, that people love her. Don't bend back like that. It's that thing. It... <laughs> Poking him in the eye. Careful you don't tread on it. <laughs> He's looking at him. He's looking at him like, hmm, don't you get too close to her. Time they supposed to get here. Ooh. The other guest. There are no other guests. Unless the other guy is her husband. I can't, I can't imagine. No, I don't think that is it. How about blindfolding the orchestra and smashing champagne glasses over Max's head? You think this is all very funny? Yeah. A little. Yeah, it's quite funny. Not a good idea, but it's funny in story purposes. I felt caught like the cigarette in that contraption on her finger. No one turned up. And when our picture's finished, I'll buy you a boat. Yeah. Stop it, you're not going to buy me anything more. He was thinking it was going to be more, but... I was going to give it to you at midnight. Of course, it wasn't going to be more. It was always going to be this way. Can't take it, you bought me enough. You got a million dollars. Keep it. Has she, though? She probably does. That's why she's lonely. Cut out that Too other much business. money. Exactly. You want me to tell you? Because she's got all the money, he has nothing. Has it ever occurred to you that I may have a life of my own? That yeah, exactly. There may be some girl that I'm crazy about? Um, car hop or dress extra? No, just his own life. What I'm trying to say is that I'm all wrong for you. I've had this kind of thing before in my life. Say it. Say it. No, he's just the writer for you. He's not... That's a fantastic shot. Oh, he should have been there in the foreground, but just him coming in when she'd gone up the stairs. Brilliant, that little bit of a distance between them both. I love that it doesn't, because the air can escape, it doesn't slam. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shut up! The butler guy kind of knows what's going on, and he did tell him. He's leaving. For good? Your, your things are there. That's just in general. That getting caught was almost like the house and the situation trying to tell him, don't go. I didn't know where I was going. I just had to get out of there. I had to be with people my own age. Even just walking in the rain would just be refreshing. Ah, oh, he's going to a proper New Year's. I love this kind of New Year's. I celebrate New Year's. Barely anybody I know does. They haven't seen him in ages. You all know Joe Gillis, the well-known screenwriter, uranium smuggler, and Black Dahlia's husband. Oh, God, he's going to take his coat off and be in that really swanky suit. And they were like, Where, what? Where'd you get that from? What is this, mink? Yep, and then a full proper suit, yeah. Who did you borrow that from? Adolf Monju? 
Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Go easy on that punch bowl. Budget only calls for three drinks per extra. Oh, they're the extras, right. You put me up for a couple of weeks. It just so happens we have a vacancy on the couch. I'll have the bellhop take care of your luggage. Oh, they hasn't got any luggage. Hello, Mr. Gillis. Hello. So it's really funny. I was going to say it a minute ago. Betty Schaefer, Sheldrake's office? Yes, it's the woman from the office. A minute ago, the, the shot was situated in such a way that the woman with her back turned, I was going to go... Don't worry, she's just a fan for my liver. she going to turn around and be like a, a love interest or something? Just someone he knows, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> say, when you're through with that thing, can I have it? <laughs> hey, you forgot this. So am I right in thinking a bit of a love interest? I've been hoping to run into you. What for, to recover that knife you stuck in my back? To say sorry. Dark windows, how'd you like it? Oh, I didn't. Thank you. <laughs> Is there some place we can talk? Well, he says sweet kid, so I don't know how how old they both are, to be fair. I said you could have my couch. I didn't say you could have my girl. Oh, oh yeah, because they're together, right? Yes. When she tells about being a school teacher. I had a teacher like that once. Well, maybe that's why it's good. It's true, it's more. Yeah, it's, they always say that the best stories are the true stories. Not that attitude. In writing. Here's something really worthwhile. There's a leak. Or is that the window? Oh, I'm serious. I've got a few ideas. And I got a few ideas of my own. One of them being this is New Year's Eve. We could make some paper boats and have a regatta. Or we could turn on the shower. How about capturing the kitchen and barricading the door? Oh, a leaky shower. A leaky shower could be what that was. In the Burmese jungle, I'm starving, Lady Agatha. My stomach's rumbling, I'm starving. He's starving in a different way. <laughs> you can have the phone now. She's also with the other guy. Philip, no, we must be strong. Furthermore, you can have the phone now. <laughs> ah, Suddenly I find myself terribly afraid of losing you. <laughs> I'll get us a refill of this horrible liquid. You'll be waiting for me. With a wildly beating heart. Life can be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the overdramatic. It's not exactly... Uh, <laughs> It's not exactly uh, private there, is it? It's going to be so very loud. Hello, Max. This is Mr. Gillis. I'm sorry, Mr. Gillis. I cannot talk now. Why? Put in all my old clothes, the ones I came with, and my typewriter. I'll have somebody pick them up. <gasps> oh, God. No time to do anything is now. She? The doctor is here. Yeah, she's ill because he's left her. Madame got the razor from your room and she... <sighs> I was going to say... I was going to say it a minute ago. When I, the, the thing about being ill and now I was going to say, oh, maybe she's tried to, you know, YouTube's a bit weird with saying stuff. That's why I said maybe she's ill. But I didn't actually think it was that because he's left her because she's always alone. She's so dependent. One gallon of lukewarm grape juice. It's because of him that she's done that. But also she's done it so that he would then rush back and he would be then dependent on thinking I don't want to hurt her feelings. This is such a typical case of when this happens. What would top it all off is if all this was just made up, if there was an actor for a doctor and he was making it up, but... My head. I, I need to start saying this stuff, because in, in my head I was saying this stuff. Okay, oh, that's what's happened. She's just doing it for attention. I have the feeling she's going to be very overdramatic to try and win him back. It's a personal experience. What kind of a silly thing was that to do? I've had an almost identical situation like this happen. Fall in love with you, that was the idiotic thing. Despite what she did. Sure would have made attractive headlines. Great stars have great pride. Very overdramatic. Go to that girl of yours. Yep. Trying to grab that attention back. Look, I, I was making that up because I thought the whole thing was a mistake. I didn't want to hurt you. She'll cry next. You're the only person in this stinking town that has been good to me. Yes, but even though she's been good to you... Why don't you just say thank you and go? Go, go! Told you she's crying. Promise to act like a sensible human being. I feel sorry for her in some ways, but I don't because she's doing it on purpose. I'll do it again. Trying to get the attention. I'll do it again. But it's so sad though. I think it is... She can't bear to be alone. That's what some of it is. <laughs> They're playing old Lang Syne as if it's a happy new year. Jesus. Is he going to ask her to go and dance? <sighs> Just going to put yourself back in that deep water again. He is. Because in my head, that's what's, what's going to happen. Happy new year, Mama. Don't call her Mama. <laughs> it's idiotic when it's funny, honey. Happy new year, darling. You think she did? No, 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 no. Wait, no, no. Did he, did he say Mama? I thought he said Mama. He might have said her name. I've forgotten her name now. <laughs> Hello? Is this Crestview? Oh, no. I must speak to Mr. Gillis. He's not here. Well, where can I reach him? There. Nobody here can give you any information. Oh, no. Hey, 
he really Who has just it, got himself into a situation now where he just can't Nothing, escape. Nothing, madam. Somebody inquiring about a straight dog. Our number must be very similar to the number of the pound. Wait a minute. She knows. To take the script over to Paramount and deliver it to Mr. DeMille in person. I was going to say, where is he? He's there and become like... You're really going to send that script to DeMille? Boyfriend? Here's a chart from my astrologer. She read DeMille's horoscope, she read mine. She read the script? Turn around, darling. Let me draw you. I hope you realise, Norma, that scripts don't sell on astrologers' charts. I'm not just selling the script, I'm selling me. DeMille always said I was his greatest star. When did he say it, Norma? Many, many years ago. All right, it was quite a few years ago. Yeah. This is a great shot of those two, by the way. I've never been as happy in my life. Yep, and he's starting to regret. He's doing it to be nice to her. She taught me how to play bridge but by then. She will take it literally. She's got to be very careful with the lines that you're overstepping. I forgot to fill my cigarette case. Here, have one of mine. She'll take the whole pack. <laughs> I thought she was going to take the whole pack. Pull up the drugstore, will you, Max? You're a darling. So I never and have will smoke. I never and have smoked but those packs are really cool the cases they had for stuff like that back then that made everything so personal but now it's just shoveling stuff out and people just buying it and buying far too much of it when they do give me a package of those turkey cigarettes i thought there were guns in the background <laughs> stick them up gillis stick them up <laughs> it's them too the girl as well she's like oh i've been trying to contact you I don't know how glad i am to see you but i've not heard you trying to contact me would you believe me if i told you i stayed with a sick friend someone in the formal set no doubt i haven't been keeping myself at all finally your old apartment gave me some crestview number yeah i tried calling there there was always somebody with an accent growling at me they never even heard of you yep What's the wonderful news? Shellrake likes the angle about the teacher. What teacher? The story. Not the, not her story, his old story. I bluffed it out with a few notions of my own. Is he going to take her story? Could you write in plenty of background action so they'll need an extra assistant director? <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Schaefer, I've given up writing on... I think he's about to come and get you, because you've been taking too long. Mr. Gillies. Yep. If you please. Uh, I'll be right there. Because she could sense. I get it. This guy's in the pay of a foreign government. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks anyway for your interest in my career. It's not your career, it's mine. I want to write. Yeah. So long. Dude. Did he did he even buy uh, didn't he go in there to buy cigarettes? Darling, it took you hours. Well, I ran into some people I know. Where are my cigarettes? Told you. He forgot to pick them up. Norma, you're smoking too much. Oh. She will not like that. She suspected I was getting bored. She would put on a she live show. Do for something. Me. To keep him there. The attention. Da, 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 da. Just ways to keep him there. <laughs> she does seem like quite a bit of fun though, but... What's the matter with you, darling? Nothing's the matter. I'm having a great time. But it's not what he wants to do. Something was the matter, all right. I was thinking about that girl of Artie's. Oh, God. And she's going to sense that he's thinking about... She was so like all us writers when we first hit Hollywood, itching with ambition. She's going to be there with like a knife going, You thinking about a girl? Open your eyes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin! I think she's even got him on the piano as well. I suppose she is from the silent era, isn't she? So, Oh, he's not on the piano, I thought he was. <laughs> Dan is wanted on the telephone. Paramount is calling. Who? Paramount Studios. Wait, what? Now do you believe me? I told you DeMille would jump at it. It is not Mr. DeMille in person. It's important enough for Mr. DeMille to call me personally. Is it to do with him, maybe? Say I'm busy and hang up. But no, you wanted him to... Because it's not him. You can't have your own... How do you like that? <laughs> she looks so funny like that. Oh, pictures together. His greatest successes! I've waited 20 years for this call. Now DeMille can wait until I'm good and ready. Oh, she put on about a half a pound of makeup. <laughs> He's constantly in watch. Hmm. The shadow over the left eye is not quite balanced. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Max. You can make a very watchful eye over her, which is good that he is doing that, but... Fantastic! They were they shot like they they incorporated Paramount Pictures into the film with it being a Paramount Pictures film as well. Mr. Demille is shooting. You got an appointment? No appointment necessary. I'm bringing Norma Desmond. Norma who? That was it. Norma. When he said, "Why?" Well, thought he said, "Mama." He was saying, "Norma." Jonesy. Hey, Jonesy. Why, if it isn't Miss Desmond? <laughs> Open the gate. Sure, Miss Desmond. Come on, Mac. They can't drive on the lot without a pass. 
Well, we'll give him one. They'll get one every time they come to the doors, because they're special. Stage 18, Miss Desmond. Thank you, Jonesy. And teach your friend some manners. Tell him without me, he wouldn't have any job, because without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount Studio. You're right, Miss Desmond. Wow. She is... I know she did very well when she was young, but she's very big-headed. All right, get, get the... Norm is coming. <laughs> He's like, oh, Norm is coming, okay. Norman Desmond's coming in to see Mr. DeMille. I thought I saw one of the extras going, oh. Norman Desmond's coming in to see Mr. DeMille. Norman Desmond? They're going to pass off. Wait a minute. They are, they're going to pass off to the higher-ups, to the higher-ups, to the higher-ups, to speak to him. Norma Desmond is coming in to see you, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> what? Norma Desmond must be about that awful script of hers. Oh, no. He has read it. I can tell her you're all tied up in the projection room. I can give her the brush. 30 million fans have given her the brush. Yeah, don't let another one do it. You didn't know Norma Desmond as a lovely little girl with more courage and wit and heart. <laughs> they never came together in one youngster. I understand she was a terror to work with. Only toward the end. You know, a dozen press agents working overtime can do terrible things to the human spirit. Yeah, one little word or saying or something and gets completely construed out of proportion. Like these days with people getting cancelled and stuff, it's pretty much the same thing. It was just the, the press did the same thing back then. Well, it's lovely brother. that she's got Hello, to go back and see the people she used to work with. And... Come on. <laughs> Wait, she just left him out there. Just cast him away. Now she doesn't need him. See, I'm, I'm terribly busy. That's no excuse. You read the script, of course. Yeah. Then you could have picked up the telephone yourself instead of leaving it to one of your assistants. Hmm? What assistant? Somebody named uh, Gordon uh, Cole. Gordon Cole? Oh, was it? It was the thing, wasn't it? Oh, no. No, I'm in the middle of a rehearsal. Was it the the driver guy making it up? Bring me a telephone and get me Gordon Cole. Oh, no, he is a real person. Okay. Why are they listening for her? Hey, Miss Desmond. It's me! Uh -huh. Hello, Argyle! Let's get a yeah. good look the at The spotlight. She's going to love all the attention. There's Norma Desmond. Norma Desmond. Okay, so people do love her. Oh, because she's been kept away for so long. And she said, well, I've written, written a film, and they'll all go, oh, my God. That's amazing. Have you been calling Norma Desmond? Yes, Mr. DeMille. It's that car of hers, and it looks just right for the Crosby picture. We want to rent it for a couple uh, of weeks. Crosby. Bing Crosby. So it wasn't about the script. It was about renting her car. Could they not give her a bit part? Turn that light back where it belongs. She won't want anyone around her when she gets the news. Did you see how they came? She's no longer in a world of her own, at least. I hope you haven't lost your sense of humour. She's crying. I just didn't realise what it would be like to come back to the old studio. Oh, bless her. How much I missed it. We've missed you too, dear. Unless this is being put on as well. We'll make our greatest picture. You're it's not. a good script, isn't it? It'll be a very expensive picture. I just want to work again. She's just really excited to work. Yes. Nothing would please me more if it were possible. I don't work before 10 in the morning and never after 4.30 in the afternoon. Why don't you just sit here? Pictures have changed quite a bit. Hold on. You see those offices? They used to be Madame's dressing room. The whole row. What? Wow. I had the upstairs. But all of that was hers. How was all of that there? Oh, that was the girl, wasn't it? Because so, I thought it maybe had been her from Paramount that was calling. But yeah, that was the girl. Oh, no, he's going to see him talking to the girl. Because <laughs> he's very protective over Norma. Hey, here's that funny car Gordon Cole was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Mind if we look it over? Oh. What's so funny about it? It's a beautiful car, but it is very old. If there's anything in dark windows you can use, take it, it's all yours. Now, why should you do that? He's going to look up through the window and see them both talking to each other. I'm just not good enough to do it all by myself. What about all those ideas you had? That's a very good shot to see him below looking up as well. Now, the first time they meet... Look, if you don't mind, I haven't time to listen to the whole part. Couldn't we work in the evenings? He'd love to, but... So, Artie's out of town. What's Artie got to do with it? We're engaged. Oh. oh. Well, good for you. Well, this is good for her. They're on location in Arizona, making a western. I, di I did say that. Don't get in the way of the relationship. So. We could work at your place if you want. It's not going to happen. It's done. It's out. Yeah. Now stop being chicken-hearted and write that story. I don't know why he's beeping anyway. She's not even there, though, at the moment, is she? So long. Oh, you. It would be a good intro for her into the industry, but he can't have any part of it. What's the matter, Max? 
I just found out the reason for all those telephone calls from Paramount. It's not Madame they want. Yeah, he found out. It's not the car. Ah, they want to rent. What? So degrading for her. Goodbye, Norma. We'll see what we can do. I'm not worried. Everything will be fine. The old team together again. Oh, no. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Mr. Nell. I mean, she's not even that old. Like, they make it out as if she's, you know, passed it and had it. And It couldn't have gone better. I think a lot of it was her stability in the role, but... Get Gordon Cole. Tell him to forget about our car. We need to get her back. Tell him he can get another old car someplace. Yeah, because it will break her heart. If you say, oh, we want to rent your car. Don't want you. The car. After that, an army of beauty experts invaded her house. Oh, no. Now she's... Like an athlete training for the Olympic Games, she counted every calorie she was absolutely determined to be ready ready for those cameras that would never turn oh i feel bad so bad for her. oh my god the the sort of treatments they did back then it's like something out of a horror film hmm you get rid of those bags under your eyes darling is that taped to like hold back the wrinkles she's like how do i look don't turn around. I just came to say goodnight. night. <laughs> she's like, I look awful. I don't want you to see me. I'm not very attractive. <laughs> a tape all over my face. I'm a little worried about the line in my throat. This woman has done wonders with it. Better get to bed yourself. I think I'll read a little longer. Yeah, but he's got to have that independence. You went out last night, didn't you, Joe? Why do you say that? I just happened to know it. I had a nightmare and I screamed for you. You weren't here. Where were you? I went for a walk. No, you yeah. didn't. You took the car. Oh. All right, I drove to the beach. He can't have any time. You don't want me to feel that I'm locked up in this house. Yeah, exactly. He can't have any time to himself. It's just that I don't want to be left alone. Not while I'm under this terrible strain. My nerves are being torn to shreds. To be always like it. Norma, I haven't done anything. Of course you haven't. I wouldn't let you. I think she would be very, uh, like, really bad if she was, uh, she found out he was seeing a girl or cheating or something. She would be very volatile. Like, scream, chuck things, throw things, break things, that kind of thing. That's it. Get out of my house. Ah. Or is he secretly meeting that girl, maybe? I was playing hooky every evening along in there. He is. It made me think of when I was 12 and used to sneak out on the folks to see a gangster picture. <laughs> This time it wasn't to see a picture, it was to try and write one. Oh, right, okay, so he is seeing her at night. When the studio was deserted, up in her little cubbyhole of an office. Oh, no, but the, the, the driver guy will know where he is, because if he remembered seeing him go up there, he will know where he probably is going to be. Is he not tired? I got the though? funniest letter from Marty. Because he's doing this constantly. Nobody knows when they'll get back. Good. What's good about it? I, I miss him something fierce. There is more time for them to be able to... Spend together. Good dialogue along in here. It'll play. It will? Sure, especially with lots of music underneath. Drowning it out. Don't you sometimes hate yourself? Constantly. No, in all seriousness, this is really good. Good for them both. Gives her the experience and the time. Getting her out of everything. Oh, mad about the boy, Norma. Who's Norma? Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't usually read private cigarette cases. From a friend of mine. The people there in the background. Who are they? It turns out to be a multimillionaire and leaves you all her money. The trouble with you readers, you know all the plots. Wait, is that some of the reasons he's now sticking around? Or is this what he's going to realise? And That if he sticks around with her so long... That's awful, that's morbid though. That he's going to stick around until she goes just to get her money. We'd make a little tour of the drowsing lot. <laughs> I'm not talking much. I love sets, like film sets and that. It was on one of those walks when she first told me about her nose. Her nose? All phony, all done with mirrors. Oh, I love that though. It'd be funny if that was used in the film itself. I come from a picture family. Naturally, they expected me to become a great star. Matic lessons, diction, dancing. She seems like a great girl for him. I didn't like my nose. Slanted this way a little. So I went to a doctor and had it fixed. No. Crazy about my nose. Only they didn't like my acting. Don't have the work done. Great as you are. You've had it done, I know, but shouldn't have had it done. It taught me a little sense. At night you weep for those lost close-ups. What's wrong with being on the other side of the cameras? It's really more fun. That's a nice shot. I will now kiss that nose. No, 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 they're gonna kiss. They're gonna kiss. They're gonna... He's gonna go down and kiss her on the mouth. May I say that you smell real special? Must be my new shampoo. I'm gonna kiss her head. That's no shampoo. And I'm gonna kiss her lips. More like freshly laundered linen handkerchiefs. Like a brand new automobile. How old are you anyway? 22. She's 22. Two feet away from me. The first time you see me coming any closer, I want you to take off a shoe and plunk me on the head with it. Because <laughs> he's madly in love. How old is he meant to be in this? Because he said earlier about, he said kid or something, didn't he? 
something that was like a youthful term. I think they're going to keep a watch on you. Someone's going to be in the garage waiting for him. Probably the uh, driver guy. There we go. That's all right. What is it, Max? Want to wash the car? Are you doing a little spying in your off hours? Yep. You must be very careful as you cross the patio. Madame may be watching. How about going up the kitchen stairs and undressing in the dark? Will that do it? I'm not inquiring where Mr. Gillis goes every night. I'm writing a script. Because he knows that he should have a little bit of independence. Greatly worried about Madame. Yeah. And we're not helping her. Feeding our lies and more lies. What happens when she finds out? She never will. But then one of these days she is going to ask, like, why is the picture not asking for me, etc. I made her a star. I directed all her early films. Oh, not husband. Ex-director. And she's turned you into a servant. Yeah. I who asked to come back, humiliating as it may seem. I could have continued my career. Definitely humiliating. You see, I was her first husband. I was right. I... I... Freaking called it earlier. I said, ah, I said about him being a husband. <laughs> I've got shivers. <laughs> oh my god. You're here, Joe. I knew it was a stupid thing to say at the time, but I was like, I feel like that would be, I feel like it would be a thing that they would put in the story. Joe, where were you? Is it a woman? I know it's a woman. Who is she? Why can't I ask you? I must know. Insecure is the right word. She's very insecure. Oh no, 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 no. Well, the last thing I wanted to do is now burn the paper with the cigarette or something. Because the cigarette is on the back, isn't it? Untitled love story. Betty Schaefer. She saw the name. But the cigarette was on the back of the thing on her finger still, so I thought maybe it was going to burn it, but it didn't. Thank God. Why is she looking at him like that? What's the matter? What? Betty, wake up. Why are you staring at me like that? Is he... is he dreaming? Oh, what? I'm sorry. Oh, that was weird. What's wrong with you tonight? What is it? Oh, she... Oh, well, something came up. I, I don't want to talk about it. Why not? Did that guy come and see her and tell her to stop to leave him alone? Or she did. Maybe she went to see her? What have you heard? Is it about me? Yeah. It's a about you, all right? Let's face it, whatever it is. I got a telegram from Artie. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, is everything okay? He wants me to come on to Arizona. Oh, okay. He says it only costs $2 to, to get married there. Wow, that's a very cheap marriage. Well, why don't you? We can finish the script by Thursday. Even back then, that was, even compared to today, I think that's very, very cheap. I don't want it now. Why not? Don't you love Artie? Of course I love him. But I love you too. She does, I... doesn't she? I'm not in love with him anymore, that's all. What happened? You did? Ah. Ah. I mean, I love that they got together, but at the same time, because she's more for him, but at the same time, I don't love that they're together because of... It wasn't until I got back Norma. to that peculiar prison of mine that I she started knows. facing the facts. Well, she knows about him seeing the lady, but... Betty Schaefer engaged to Artie Green, as nice a guy as ever lived, and she was in love with yep, me. Yeah, but Norma knows she's going to be there waiting. Blade in her hand, waiting. Yep, in the dark. I was a heel not to have told her, but you just can't say those things. Maybe I could get away with it. The picture of her staring him over the shoulder. Who's she calling at this time of night? Hmm. May I speak to Miss Betty Schaefer? She must be home by now. No. Hey, Betty, here's that weird sounding woman again. Well, what is this anyway? Is she gonna. This is Betty Schaefer. Do. Wait, again? You must forgive me for calling you so late, but I really feel it's my duty. It's about Mr. Gillis. Do you know where he lives? Do you know how he lives? Who are you? What do you want? What business is it of yours anyway? <gasps> She's a great actress, the one who, uh, Schaefer. I'm trying to spare you a great deal of misery. But he does not live with relatives. Well, ask him. Oh, you can ask him yourself now. He's just there. That's right, Betty. Ask me again. Yep. This is Joe. Joe? Where are you? What is this all about? He wants to escape. Or oh, better yet, why don't you come out and see for yourself? The address is 10,086 Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. I like that he is now trying to stand up for himself to have 
He's got to put a stop to it to have some kind of freedom not be with her, so. I did because I need you. I need mm. you as I've never needed you before. You don't. You like the thought of him. Look at my hand. You shouldn't just constantly need him like that. How can I go back to work if I'm wasting away under this torment? You don't know what I've been through these last week. She's got a very possessive personality. <laughs> if that's the right term. I bought myself a revolver, I did. I did. I stood in front of that mirror, but I couldn't make myself do it. What? Oh, is she... Is this another thing? Strike me, but don't hate me! No, he's not going to strike you or... You don't hate me, Joe! Probably walk out, if anything. She does need help, though. Talk to someone, have some friends. It must be over there. God, if she goes in, <laughs> she won't come out. Let me come along with you, please. No, I'll be all right. Oh, God. I hope so. Oh no, oh no, she got a revolver, didn't she? I don't think this is this sort of film, but if she did get a revolver, and the woman he's been seeing is going into there, she did not think he, she would actually what turn up. What are you going to do? Let her in. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what happens. Someone comes, you let them in, or you speak to them. I don't know why I'm so scared, Joel. Is it something awful? Come on in. It's weird because it shouldn't be an awful situation. Ever been in one of these old Hollywood palazzos? It's a very nerve-wracking situation. Valentino used to dance here. This is where you live? Yeah, but... Whose house is it? Norma. You must have heard the name. Norma Desmond? That was Norma Desmond on the phone? Would you like something to drink? I wonder if he's now going to take it as a little bit more of an advantage of being like, well, you can't keep being like you are. Her own movie theater. I didn't come here to see a house. Yeah. What about Norma Desmond? That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is an enormous place. What's he trying to get? This is all just for her. So she got herself a companion. A younger man who's not doing too well. And she roped him in. I haven't heard any of this. I never got those telephone calls and I've never been in this house. I'll get your things together and let's get out of here. All my things? All my 18 suits and the six dozen shirts? None of that stuff. Your stuff. The original stuff. Come on, Joe. Gotta leave. Back to a one-room apartment I can't pay for? If you love me, Joe. You do. I've got a good deal here. I have this really awful feeling that that gun is going to... She, she really did buy one. You can hear a gunshot in a minute. You and Artie can be admirable. Because she's jealous. I can't look at you anymore, Joe. I can't look in case something awful happens. Is she going to let her go, though? Good luck to you, Betty. You can finish that script on the way to Arizona. So he is letting her go. When you and Artie get back. Two of you ever feel like taking a swim? Here's the pool. At least now, anyway. Dude, you were better off with Betty. Not trapped there. In that... She's watching, yeah. Always watching. He is like a puppy dog. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Joe. Well, he's not, but you know what I mean. Joe. That's ruined his chance of a happy existence himself. That's a very good shot. She's not even looking at herself in that shot as well. She's looking at the camera, but that's brilliant. May I come in, Joe? I've stopped crying. I'm all right again. Joe, tell me you're not cross. Tell me everything is just as it was, Joe. Joe. He is leaving. What are you doing, Joe? Good. This is the point when she can get that gun out. Because I feel like she would have got a gun. And again, I don't know if the... You're leaving me. The doorman would have let her. The butler guy. No, you're not. Max! Thanks for letting me wear the handsome wardrobe. And thanks for the use of all the trinkets. She's going to be like, well, you've it's used yours, me. Joe. I gave it to you. For all of this stuff. It's a little too dressy for sitting behind a copy desk. What is it you want? Happiness, freedom, anything. Not that. You can't go! Max! Max! Yeah, Max is the one I was saying about the, the butler guy. And you know I'm not afraid to die. Do you think I made that up about the gun? She didn't, did she? She didn't. She did actually buy the gun, didn't she? I knew it. She's going to get it. She's going to sh** him. Dude, look behind you. Look behind you. Look behind you. You didn't believe me. Now I suppose you don't think I have the courage. Oh, sure, if it would make a good scene. Wake up, Norma. The audience left 20 years ago. Now face it. It's a lie. They still want me. No, they don't. People did actually want her, though, when she went in. Demille. What about Demille? The studio only wanted to rent your car. Wanted what? Demille didn't have the heart to tell you. No, no, don't tell her. That will kill her. They want me. I get letters every day. You tell her, Max. Tell her there isn't going to be any picture. No, because he knows that that will... There aren't any fan letters except the ones you write. Madame is the greatest star of them all. I will take Mr. Gillis's bags to the car. Stop crying. It's such a difficult situation for them all. You heard him? I'm a star. 
Norma, you're a woman of 50. Now go She up. has completely gone. She's just out of it now. Goodbye, Norma. No one ever leaves the star. I said this. She's going to kill him for leaving her. She's going to shoot him. If, if I can't have you, no one can have you. That's what it's going to be a case of. She's pointing the gun. Turn around, dude. She's going to go right out those windows. Or oh, from the doorway. Oh, and he's still trying to leave. Oh my God. Into the pool. That's how they found him. I forgot the beginning of the film. That was him in the pool. How did I forget the beginning of the film? I don't know. In my head, I think I must have thought it was someone else that was in the pool. Oh God. Stars are ageless. Back at that pool again. Oh the one I always wanted. What a waste of a life, though. This is why you have to be Funny so... Funny how gentle people get with you once you're careful. dead. Yeah. As much hoop to do as we get in Los Angeles when they open a supermarket. Even the newsreel guys came roaring in. Paramount News? Was that a thing back then? Is that still a thing now? I don't think it is, is it? What would they do to Norma? Crime of passion. Temporary insanity. Or was it the news they put before films? They did that sometimes back then. Those headlines would kill her. Forgotten star, a slayer. He kind of called it early, didn't he? Remember he said something about, what would they say about a, a star? Did he say something about a star killing the, the, the man that she was living with or something? Who's on this phone? I am. <laughs> now get off. This is more important. I'm talking from the bedroom of Norma Desmond. They're just cashing in on that. Was it a sudden quarrel? So this is how she gets her fame. If it was a quarrel, how come this gun was right there? Where did he come from? Who is he? I think they're going to have to take her away, I think. Newsreel men are here with the cameras. Tell them to go fly a kite. They this is this is going to be her moment. Is there anything you want to tell us? She plays a s such a good character. Version on the edge of sanity. The cameras have arrived. They have. I think she's pushed over the edge of sanity tell now. Tell Mr. But, DeMille I'll yeah. be on the set at once. What is this? Yeah. She has completely... Well, it's one way to get her downstairs. It is. Let's have the car right outside. Okay? Everything will be ready, madame. She's got to play into it. Pardon me, gentlemen. Into the act. But I must get ready for my scene. Everything set up, gentlemen? Just about. Lights ready? All set. Poor guy. Killed and now his, his murder is now overshadowed with her thinking that she's... Okay, fellas. Oh, 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 oh. She'll think it's the fame. What is the scene? Oh God! Oh my God! The cameras were turning for her. Life, which can be strangely merciful. That's a gorgeous shot. Go down the stairs, though. The dream she had clung to so desperately had enfolded her. <laughs> Dude, you at the front? Those lights aren't doing anything. They're meant to be, I think. But... I can't go on with the scene. I'm too happy. Oh. Mr. Demille, do you mind if I say a few words? The slow demise of. Norma. You don't know how much I've missed all of you. And I promise you I'll never desert you again. Because after Salome, we'll make another picture and another picture. It always will be. Won't be now. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. That's so cool. Referencing us. All right, as Mr. The... DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. I don't think I've seen that before. Oh, that is such a good shot. Creepy. The eyes of a killer. Such a good ending to that. Everything happens down on Sunset Boulevard. That was a wonderfully, beautifully done film. The cinematography of that. Yes, please, every day. The, the, the mise en scene, which is the right word, because it was everything that was within the shots themselves, so beautifully done, that they're, they're, they're just perfectly made. Like the shot of the mirror that was with her, and then he walks into shot as she goes up the stairs, all of that, absolutely incredible. And he just didn't deserve to be killed at the end. And then you had her, she was slowly losing her sanity throughout the whole film, and it was such a sad thing to see because you kind of knew that things weren't right near the start, and I could tell, I could see the signs there of this one-sided bond that she was very much latching onto him and trying to get the attention of him and anything that he didn't want to do or anything he wanted to, you know, still have his own freedom, etc. She was then latching onto that and saying, no, 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 but I need you, I need you. And anything he tried to do, she would then bite back with something else 
like harming herself or do you know what I mean? Surprising the amount of different areas of that film that were so well made but at the same time showed the background of Hollywood itself. It showed the behind the scenes of Hollywood so well. It reminded me so much of I think it's Singing in the Rain where the you know the girl can't sing and they get the you see a lot of behind the scenes anyway of Singing in the Rain uh, of the Hollywood film sets and that kind of thing. And the fact that he ended up there, he pulled into that driveway and technically he never left. He, okay, he left and he went off and did his own thing with the, the, the other lady that was with his friend and he didn't really leave. He was just always tied there, stuck with Norma Desmond and the way they were with each other um, hit very close to home for me because of similar experiences. So I kind of knew some of the things that she was going to do, or I don't know, maybe that's why I could sense a few of the things that did happen in the film. Very well written, it, it felt very real, as in you could expect that to happen in a real relationship. Um, and it has happened many, many times in real relationships to real people. Please don't worry, I'm going to be doing so many more of these older films because I love them. And uh, yeah, okay, there may be one or two more modern film that I'm going to be throwing into the mix as well. And obviously we've got some of the more modern TV shows that I watch as well. But then we've also got the classic Doctor Whos. But we also do have more over than anything else. We are going to be having more of these. They are just truly great cinema. Some of the bits I find really entertaining with that is it wasn't so much done in words. It was more visually done where you can see his emotions because the guy is such an amazing actor that you see every little detail and the same with her that both of them did very well with showing their emotions in their faces and their eyes and if if most of the film and i suppose with her it does lend a lot to her being a silent film actress because she's very emotional with her eyes but i found that to be very very intriguing certain things that she said as they were going along and the way that she was starting to act like her going to the studios you could see the way that she was changing and you could see the way things were affecting her the way they were with her not being of sound mind altogether it was slowly changing her to be even more like that the other i think the one thing that really helped her though was when she went to the studios not that itself but when she went to the studios and you could almost see a look in her eyes of maybe I'm not as big as I used to be and almost realizing it but then as that was happening you see the the extras and the other crew members they come over to her and say, oh my god it's Norma Desmond and they crowd around her I don't think that helped her really but it was wonderful to see it visually because it really did match together with your thoughts on Norma and what was happening. I'm still incredibly sorry, by the way, that if you can hear knocking and banging and stuff behind, it's not trying someone trying to get in. It is the wind. It's a storm outside. It is very, very strong. It's incredibly strong winds in comparison to what they said it was going to be today. There was me earlier today going, do you know what? I'll film something later. I'll film a reaction and uh, we'll try and watch Sunset Boulevard. But little did I know there was going to be a storm. And it seems to happen that I watch a lot of things with a storm. They can hear the wind very, very strongly outside right now. Anyway, without further ado, shall we try and delve a little bit into the trivia itself? According to this, when Norma Desmond says to the guard, the Paramount Studio gates, she also then says, without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount Studio. The words themselves could actually apply to Gloria Swanson herself, as she was the studio's top star for six years running. The character of Norma Desmond is modelled on the fate of several leading actresses of the silent era. Mary Pickford, I've heard of Mary Pickford, lived in seclusion away from the public eye, okay, so it's very similar to that, while both Mae Murray and Clara Bow, or Bo, had well-documented struggles with mental illness. I didn't know those two had had um, struggles with that though, but I did know of Mary Pickford. I think she's mentioned in a song that I've heard before, but... Mary Pickford used to eat roses. Unlike the characters she played, Gloria Swanson had accepted the fact that the movies didn't want her anymore and had moved to New York, where she worked on radio and later television. Although she had long before ruled out the possibility of a movie comeback, she was nevertheless highly intrigued when she got the offer to play the lead. When Gloria Swanson finished Norma's final scene, the mad staircase descent with that amazing shot at the end of her eyes and the, the coming towards the camera, 
superb. She burst into tears after she did that mad descent scene and the crew then applauded. Even though it wasn't the final scene that was filmed, Billy Wilder threw a party for her as soon as the shot was finished. That's beautiful. That's lovely. So Joe was apparently uh, the main guy and it was apparently Montgomery Clift originally. Yeah, as Joe Gillis, but quit the production two weeks before filming began because he had already played the kept man of a wealthy older woman in The Heiress in 1949. Okay, so you obviously didn't want to be known as I'm the kept man <laughs> in everything he was in. Clift was also wary of appearing in the film because he, like the character of Joe, was having an affair with an older, wealthy former actress, Libby Holman. Holman was reportedly worried the film would parody their relationship and told Cliff she and told Cliff she would unalive if he played the role. Jesus, that's scarily true to the to the film's plot. Oh well, the young photos of Norma Desmond that decorate the house are all genuine publicity photos from Gloria Swanson's heyday. Apparently Paramount was more than happy to be the subject of the film and didn't ask for the studio to be disguised. In fact, such was the buzz about the film during production that the viewing of the dailies became one of the hottest tickets on the lot. That's so cool. I wonder if people that weren't actresses and actors just generalise members of Paramount if they were allowed to be in the shots, if they were even paid royalties and, you know, paid things to be in the film. I feel like they probably wouldn't allow that. They would probably just shut it down completely, as in lock it off so no one else could come in. Surely it would be easier to cast some of the Paramount lot crew than to get actors in to play them. <laughs> As a practical joke, during the scene where William Holden and Nancy Olsen kiss for the first time, Billy Wilder let them carry on for minutes without yelling cut. He'd already gotten the shot he needed on the first take. Eventually it wasn't Wilder who shouted cut, but Holden's wife, Ardis, Brenda Marshall, who happened to be on set that day. <laughs> oh! So just looking through it, I didn't recognise his face. I kind of recognised him in something, but I didn't think I'd seen anything he was in. I thought it was just a familiar face. Turns out William Holden was in the film Sabrina that had Audrey Hepburn in it. Oh, DeMille the, in the film. So Cecil B. DeMille apparently was the real life DeMille. Like, is in, I think he's a director or something. I've not heard of his name before. Yeah, he's a director, producer and editor. His parents were playwrights. I feel bad because I've not heard of him before. <laughs> wow. Billy Wilder went into production with only 61 pages of script finished, so he had to shoot more or less in chronological order. This was a first for Gloria Swanson, but proved a big boon in helping her develop her character's descent into madness. <sighs> Such a beautifully acted and just beautifully done film in the fact that you really do see that change every time you see her just something else doesn't feel quite right and it's the look in her eyes especially that near the end when they say about the cameras and she looks as if to go cameras and you you know you you know what she's thinking and how she is being and you just know that by that point she it's the bottom of the descent. Oh, that's really cool. The Desmond Mansion was located not on Sunset Boulevard, but at 641 South Irving Boulevard, built in 1924 by William Jenkins at a cost of $250,000. Its second owner was Jean-Paul Getty, who purchased it for his second wife. Mrs. Getty divorced her millionaire husband and received custody of the house. It was she who rented it to Paramount for the filming. But this is the bit. The only addition was the swimming pool, which wasn't equipped with a means of circulating the water, so it was useless after filming. The pool was used in its empty condition in Rebel Without a Cause. The mansion was torn down in 1957 and a large office building for Getty Oil was built on the site, and that still stands on the spot to this day. I've not seen Rebel Without a Cause, I know. I know, I've not seen any of the James Dean stuff, but I know about it because my dad is a huge James Dean fan and he's told me about Rebel Without a Cause before. It's crazy to me they'll knock something like that down just to build an office block. Crazy. I mean, so something like that could be used for, you know, so much good, but yet you get places that are abandoned. So many places in the world that is abandoned and just has no use 
at all and nothing is done with the places and there's electricity on in half of them as well. <laughs> Turn off the electrics, what are you doing? And also helping out people by giving people homes if they don't have a home. Instead of knocking places down and building office blocks there where you could have just built an office block somewhere else. Did you need it? For getty oil? No. Oh wow, it was Billy Wilder who requested Gloria Swanson to do the role. She almost considered rejecting the role, but then her friend George Cooker heard a bang. But then her friend George Cooker, who initially recommended her for the part, told her if they want you to do 10 screen tests, do 10 screen tests. If you don't, oh, okay, if you don't, I'll personally pff, you. Jesus, they are very strong worded. Swanson agreed to do the audition and then won the role. Thank God. <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille appears in the film on a studio set, and that was the actual set of Samson and Delilah from 1949. I have not seen it, I'm very sorry. But he was filming that film at the time. That's so cool. There you go, the movie's line. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. Was voted the number seven movie quote for the American Film Institute. It is also one of the most frequently misquoted movie lines usually given as, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. The other line being, I am big. It's the pictures that got small. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. Was voted number 24 out of 100. That, to me, is a brilliant line. I'd, I'd heard the I'm ready for my close-up line before, but for me, one of, the, one of the greatest lines in that film is the I am big. It's the pictures that got small. You know, I'm, I'm so much bigger than what films are now. Oh wow! In one of the biggest upsets at the Academy Awards in history, Judy Holliday won the Best Actress Oscar in 1951 for Born Yesterday from 1950, beating Gloria Swanson in this film and Betty Davis in All About Eve from 1950. It was widely believed that the two titans had cancelled each other out, leaving the field clear for Holliday. In later interviews, Davis admitted that she thought Swanson's work in the film was absolutely outstanding. Oh my God. I don't know how I would have felt if my family member had been like this, but according to Gloria Swanson's daughter, Michelle, her mother stayed in character throughout the entire shoot. Even speaking like Norma Desmond, when she arrived home in the evening after filming. On the last day of shooting, Swanson drove back to the house. She, her mother and daughter shared during production, announcing there were only three of us in it now, meaning that Norma Desmond had taken her leave. That's fantastic method acting, like proper character acting, but imagine, like, especially in the last bits of that film, she is properly down deep inside that mind and coming home from filming that and still keeping in that role. I'm surprised it really didn't send her that way. Aw, for the first industry screening, Paramount executives invited several silent film stars. At the end, they stood and cheered for Gloria Swanson's return. That's so lovely. Apparently other actresses considered for the role of Norma Desmond were Mae West, who wanted to rewrite the dialogue of the character, Mae Murray and Mary Pickford. And if it was just those three, I would have said they've got some fascination with someone with the name of M, because it's being Mae, Mae and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But then it goes on to say Poland Negri and Greta Garbo as well. I do actually really like the way they chose the name for Norma Desmond. The name Norma Desmond was chosen from a combination of silent film star Norma Talmudge and the silent movie director William Desmond Taylor, whose still unsolved murder is one of the great scandals of Hollywood history. Oh my god. Okay, I didn't know that. I, did, I didn't read on that far. I didn't know there was an unsolved murder. Ah, Daryl F. Zanuck, uh, Olivia de Havilland, Tyrone Power and Samuel Goldwyn all refused to allow their names to be used in the film, but Billy Wilder decided to use Zanuck's and Power's names anyway. Oddly enough, the reclusive Greta Garbo granted permission to use her name, though when she saw the film itself, she was sorry she had done so. <laughs> when crew members asked Billy Wilder how he was going to shoot the burial of the Norma's monkey scene, one of the film's most bizarre scenes, he just said, you know, the usual monkey funeral sequence. <laughs> but it was such a really odd choice to have that in there. You know, her burying a monkey, she'd had a monkey as a, as a 
pet, like almost like a family member. I did, there was never, never any other reference that I remember. There was never any other reference to the monkey. It almost, if that wasn't there, it wouldn't make any difference to the film. It was just a just a quirky little addition to the film. I suppose it kind of played into what you thought about her character and the way her mind was. And I still cannot believe, and I am thinking again on this, but I can't believe that I called it when I said that her butler was probably one of her husbands. And he was. He was her first husband. I got it right. I was so over the moon when that when that came out because that was just a it was a throwaway thing that I'd been thinking in my head just because I knew it probably wouldn't be a thing but in my head it kept coming up and I was going she's probably going to be one of her husbands Eric von Stroheim um, I think Stroheim uh, dismissed his participation in this film referring to it as that butler role it's crazy to me that he just dismissed it I thought he had such depth to his character because he wasn't just this guy that was looking after her you could sense something wasn't right and you know you could see me knowing that something was not right he was almost like the the child mind of the babysitter for her and that she he was really keeping something close to his heart about her that he didn't want anyone else to know the wind is getting very strong now apologies but you could sense that he was keeping something very close to his heart about her that he didn't want other, anyone else to know and he would try and do his best to keep her safe against any harm. And it turns out that was the reason why. One, he was her ex-husband. Two, he was obviously an ex-director of hers. And he cared about her. And he probably still loved her in some ways. That's why he was caring for her. But he just could no longer be with her, probably because of the way she was. And he just wanted to make sure that she was okay and he probably in some ways felt a lot like Joe did in the fact that he felt like he couldn't leave so he thought because I know I know he wasn't originally a butler he was just a director etc and then he said he came back I think I remember Joe saying something don't you feel like it's embarrassing or demeaning or something he said and that's what I was thinking that if you were to be like an ex-husband or something it must be very very demeaning obviously by that point though we hadn't i don't believe we'd been told that he was the ex-husband husband at this point unless we were just told that at that moment i can't remember the specific scene we probably were just told you are kidding cecil b demille agreed to do his cameo you know as the director of that film in the film for a ten thousand dollar fee and a brand new Cadillac kind of world but were they living in to go oh yeah don't worry we'll give you a we'll give you a lovely brand new Cadillac and 10 grand don't worry about it it's fine he's just appearing in it for a scene give him the normal fee don't treat him like someone special okay he was a director he directed some great films but and apparently when Billy Wilder went back to him later to secure a close-up DeMille charged him another 10 grand? DeMille. More like DeVille. What the flippin' Nora? <laughs> what? After a private screening for Hollywood dignitaries, Barbara Stanick knelt in front of Gloria Swanson and kissed the hem of her skirt. The veteran actress particularly wanted to see what Mary Pickford felt and was disappointed to see that she had left. Swanson was told, she can't show herself, Gloria. She's too overcome. We all are. Not everyone felt the same way, however. Lewis B. Mayer's reaction is well documented, but May Murray also found the film offensive. Offensive to women in general? Or maybe offensive to, to people in the industry as to the way that they treat others? Maybe even offensive to the way the guy treats her when she, you can tell that she's starting to to not be quite right. Here we go, so about Gloria Swanson's career. It wasn't revitalized by the film. She was disappointed to see all the parts she was offered subsequently were watered down versions of Norma Desmond. Ultimately, she retired completely from films, making only sporadic appearances, notably in Airport 1975. Oh my God, there are so many. I was reading through a fair amount of them. <laughs> Gloria Swanson became so identified with the demanding, irrational Norma that later generations of fans were startled to discover her serene, easygoing, naturalist personality in real life. 
Yeah, I think what I'll do is because there are so many of these, you just go onto IMDb and you'll see the amount of trivia there is. And I've I've seen this once or twice before where there is like thousands of trivia pieces. Um, so it's going to be impossible for me to read through all of them and pick out like the best ones. But if I haven't read something out and if you know some information, like some bits of trivia, you'd love me to know. Or if you want to just discuss it in the comments with other people, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know some of that trivia because I adore trivia facts. Ah, oh, I didn't know this, but Betty Schaefer um, or Nancy Olsen is her real name. She, I had no idea she was in the film. I watched this before I started the channel. I absolutely love The Absent-Minded Professor and she was in that. Betsy, you've got to let me explain what happened. Come on, Betsy. Betsy. See, this list has so many random facts that people have just kind of plunked in there they for one max never smiles throughout the entire film that's it that's that's the fact just that max never smiles in the film so it's 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 great that all this is here but there's just so much of it and most of it's just completely pointless oh wow this kind of remember i said about the singing in the rain thing with people replacing silent films voices uh, once they hear their actual voices. Well, <laughs> Billy Wilder originally wanted another film star, who was a silent film star, uh, Pola Negri, you know, the one I mentioned earlier. I think, is it Pola Negri, maybe? I'm not sure how you say the name. Uh, to take part of Norma Desmond. Upon telephoning her, however, Wilder found that Negri's Polish accent, uh, which had killed her career, was still far too thick for such a, uh, a dialogue heavy film. But yeah, it just reminds me so much of that, especially with there being a silent film star as well. The store where Joe Gillis meets up with old movie industry friends is Schwab's Pharmacy, which was then a real pharmacy slash soda fountain at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and Crescent Heights Boulevard in West Hollywood. It's widely known as the top Hollywood hangout for many actors, directors, producers, and writers. F. Scott Fitzgerald suffered a heart attack while in Schwab's in 1940, Contrary to legend, Lana Turner was not discovered by talent agents in Schwab's, but in a store across from the Hollywood High School, about three miles to the east. Schwab's, though, was then torn down in 1988 to make way for a movie theatre and a shopping centre. And I wonder, would be the best way to say, I'm sorry, but we've, we've knocked down Schwab's, but... In its place, we're putting this movie theater and the first film we're gonna be playing is Sunset Boulevard. Because it, it kind of feels like that would be a lovely way to almost commemorate the way it used to be. <laughs> the writers feared that Hollywood would react unfavorably to such a damning portrait of the film industry. So the film was codenamed A Can of Beans while in production. <laughs> Fantastic. I am very much hoping you can hear everything I've been saying because that wind is getting stronger out there. The, the storm is getting stronger. And if I was anywhere else other than in the UK, I would be severely worried right now. It seems to be okay and there's no weather warnings. <laughs> Lux Radio Theatre broadcast a 60 minute radio adaptation of the movie on September the 17th, 1951 with Gloria Swanson and William Holden reprising their film titles, reprising their film roles, just like when we watched Laura and they did some, uh, radio shows of it and the actors came back and did those as well it's fantastic the first floor set of norma desmond's mansion was also used in the western comedy fancy pants starring bob hope and lucille ball giving fans a chance to see it in full color in the movie an aide tells cecil b demille uh, gordon cole has been trying to reach you gordon cole was a real person who worked for paramount for many years and was its senior property master. He worked on many great films, uh, usually without credit, including DeMille's Samson and Delilah, 1949, who, that was the film that he was working on at the same time, which is so cool, but so strange. And also the Ten Commandments in 1956 as well. In subsequent years, two lawsuits have been filed against Billy Wilder and Charles Brackett, claiming that Sunset Boulevard, 1950, was plagiarized from other scripts. Both the suits were dismissed though i mean it, it is similar to other films i wouldn't say it was plagiarized though because it is just a normal thing that happens in real life i suppose a certain sequence of events may have happened in other scripts and that's the reason why they're saying that it's plagiarized but 
I don't think it would have been. I don't I don't think it would have been. I mean, it was dismissed. So there you go. Billy Wilder wanted a fresh face for the part of Betty Schaefer. The part was only Nancy Olsen's third film appearance. She was brilliant in that film. I'm very much hoping, and I think I confirmed this earlier, that it didn't really say much, but I'm very much hoping she had tons of work after that. Sorry, no, no, she does. She did have tons of work. I was trying to get into it and then I mentioned something else and completely went off it. Right guys, thank you so much for watching with me. Hope you really enjoyed this reaction. That's just a selection of many thousands of bits of trivia that you can check out. There's loads on the IMDb page. There's loads of others elsewhere, obviously as well. But that's where I check out my bits of info. Hope you guys really enjoyed this anyway. And if you did like it, then consider clicking that like button and subscribing if you do want to watch more things like this. And a little something that I ask people to do, um, but you don't have to, um, but it's a little game that we do on most of these film reactions, is to say certain words in the comments, um, just to kind of let me know secretly that you've seen the, the whole video. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it just, it's, yeah, it just lets me know that you've seen it and I really appreciate it. I think we'll do as a hidden saying this time. I was trying to think of what to say and I think ready for my close up is like a perfect saying. But yes, I hope you really enjoyed this video, guys. I've got loads more coming. I've got loads of films that I've been watching recently to put out as uncuts and to get ready for the channel itself. If you want to see any of the uncut reactions that I do, then feel free to go over to my Patreon page and they are over there. And also early accesses go up over there as well. Thank you very much, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye. If you're still here to the very end, then thank you so much. And also a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons. Roger C. Griffith, Douglas Collier, Terry V, Miggy Love, Chris Holmes, Jojo, Thomas Masters, Shoehorn1234, Ress, Patrick Durr, Andrew Blount, Carlos, Marla Mize, Rob, Chandra Blair, Scott, Paul Zawicki, Randy, Kirsten, Juan Pablo Camero, JL, Maggie, Freya Alexandra, Milo, Miranda, Edna, Gina Aman, Tess Avaland, Olivia, Maria Stoicheva, Nasesno, Megan Janoviak, Rainy Tomo, Strawberry Tree, Kirsten Bailey, Boobly Boo, Louise Vanderhoven, Aubrey Terry, Raithist, Heidi Steele, City D, Bumblebee, Joshua, Jesse, Rena Burra, Meet, Lolita Verbakovskia, Eli, Holly Jeffries, Alenka Hafner, HM Garth, Chloe Grover, Neb, Kyle Baker, Abby Barker, Tom Tattershall, Kristen Olds, Tilly Chum, Laura Hutchison, Tara M. Will Coxon, Sazzy Nation, Ferdinand Pitchard, Jim McKay, Sphere, Mel Days, Fran in the Pen, BG, Tara, and Rags and Muffins. If you'd like to see more videos, there's some more on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and see you next time.